Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Today, I'm going to talk about ORCA, which is the result of co-designing a garbage collector and a type system in the context of actor languages. And I must say that Vancouver is probably the best city to be talking about ORCA, so I'm very happy about that. But without uh, <laughs> further ado, let me introduce you to two good, two good friends of mine, Pony and ORCA. So Pony is an actor-based language that, um, among many other things, it uses a type system to ensure that if a program compiles, there are no data races in that program. And ORCA is a garbage collector that runs in Pony, and it is fully compliant, meaning that it does not require any stop uh, draw steps, and it also does not require any synchronization mechanisms, such as read or write barriers for garbage collection. And it does so while, allow, while, while allowing for actors to share states. So there are many actor-based languages or libraries, and we have learned a bit, we have learned quite a lot from those languages. So let's look at Erlang, for example. In Erlang, each actor has its own local heap. So this means that whenever an actor locates some data, it will do so in its local heap. But it also means that data is completely isolated, meaning that if an actor sends a message, it needs to copy the contents of the message to the receiver's heap. Uh, but the, what's really interesting about this approach is that each actor is able to do garbage collection of its garbage completely independent if, independently from other actors. So there's no need for synchronization among actors for doing garbage collection. If you look at the different approach, such as the ones for uh, languages and libraries that run in the JVM, what we have is a global heap where all the objects are located and we have many actors sharing these objects. And the really nice thing about it is that sending a message containing some objects does not really require extra work. It does not require, does not require any copying. So this is really nice. The problem is that whenever there's garbage collection, all the actors need to pay a bit. So for example, they might be stopped due to a stopped road step, or they might need to synchronize with the collectors. So what we have been trying to answer with Orca is, can we have both? Can we have actors sharing sites and sending messages without copying, while still having a garbage collection without synchronization and stopped road as in Erlang? So in Pony, each actor also has its own local heap, like in Erlang, where it will locate and deallocate its own objects. But he, like in Akka or other JVM-based uh, actor, JVM-based actor implementations, it will allow for a sharing of uh, data, meaning that if an actor sends a message, it does not need to copy any of the contents to the receiver's heap. So there are three main ingredients that allow for this. The first one, as I said, is that actors have their own local heaps. And from now on, I might refer to the objects in their local heaps as own objects. So each actor is responsible to collect their own garbage. The second uh, ingredient is that we use the message passing from the actor paradigm as a non-blocking synchronization, meaning that sometimes the actors might need to exchange the messages to update their views on the, the object graph, but an actor will never get stuck or blocked waiting for a message to arrive. And finally, the existence of a type system that ensures data race freedom. So using this type system, we'll be able to avoid all the, the read and write barriers that we usually have in concurrent garbage collectors. And for the rest of my talk, what I'm going to try to, sh to show you is that using this information, we have, uh, sorry, using these ingredients, all the information needed for garbage collection will be local to the actors. Meaning that if at some point in time an actor decides to start a garbage collection cycle, it will not need to synchronize with any other actor. So it can do garbage collection concurrently with the execution of other actors' behaviors. So if an actor starts a garbage collection cycle, how does the actor know that other, ob that other actors can reach its objects, right? So in ORCA, we keep reference counts for some objects. Namely, an actor will keep reference counts for the objects it owns and it has shared, and for objects that it can reach outside its heap, uh, that it can reach outside its heap. So for example, in this case, we have uh, two actors, Alice and Bob, uh, and Alice has uh, an object in its heap which is not reachable by anywhere else other than Alice. This object does not need any reference counting. But if you look at Bob's local heap, we have an object that is reachable from outside, from Alice. Therefore, Bob must keep a reference count for these, to, for these objects. And uh, Alice must keep one reference too because it can reach an object that it's not hers. Right? I will explain in a bit why we need to keep this second reference count. What's really important to note here is that this is not reference counting as in other garbage collection systems, where reference counting actually shapes the, the object graph. So in ORCA, there's no problems with cycles, for example. What this reference counting means is that on the owner's side, the reference count of an object is an upper bound on the number of actors that can reach that object. 
meaning that whenever this reference count gets to be zero, there's no other actor in the system other than the, the owner itself that can reach these objects. So now that we know how these reference counts uh, work, let's see what happens when we send and receive messages containing objects. So we have again Alice and Bob, and Alice has an object in, its, in, a, in her heap, and it will send this object to Bob in a message. And when it does so, it drops its, her reference to that object. How do we ensure that if Alice starts a garbage collection now, that it won't collect this object that it's now reachable from a message? Well, when Alice sends the message, it will increment a reference count for this object by one. So, oops. Uh, on the other side of the communication, when Bob receives a message, it gets a reference to this object, right? So it will also increment its reference count by one. And this is the current state. After this, if Bob decides to forward this message to a third actor, Snoopy, how does Alice know that this object is reachable by another actor? Well, when Bob sends the message before that, it will send a message to Alice saying, I'm about to share your object. Please increment your reference count by some positive number. So in this case, Bob is asking Alice to increment the reference count for that object by 256. It will, the Bob will also set his reference count by 256, and so does Alice. And I could have used any number here. I could have used one. The reason why I'm using 256 or any other large number, it's because the next time that Bob sends this object in a message, it will not need to send a message to the owner or to the owner of object to, to Alice. So, but if I send an object, I think that I'm also sending uh, all the objects that are reachable from that object. So what do I do regarding those objects? I'm also giving access to those objects. So Orca requires the actors to trace the messages on sending and receiving. And for all the objects that it finds, the, the actor will need to increment and decrement the reference counting of those objects accordingly. So how tracing works, it's quite interesting, but for the sake of time, I will not discuss it here, but I'm more than happy to discuss it offline. OK, so we have some tracing. But isn't it true that in concurrent garbage collectors, there's a problem of, uh, of data races on, during tracing? So if I'm doing tracing, won't other actors mutate this object graph? Well, it can't happen in Pony, right? As I said in the beginning, there's a type system that ensures data race freedom. So this means that if we have several actors that share an object, but if they, they all read from this object, then there's no problem whatsoever. If there is an actor that can write to an object fields, then we have the guarantee that no other objects or no other actor can read from those fields, right? So this means that during tracing, if an actor is tracing the graph, if the actor is reading the graph, there won't be any actor in the whole system that is able to mutate it. And this will allow us to avoid uh, the synchronization mechanisms. So now we understand what's the role of messages and reference counting in, in Arkham, but when does garbage collection happen? So during its execution, an actor is taking messages from its queue and executing uh, the corresponding behaviors. And in between executing behaviors, it will look at the state of its heap and decide whether it needs to do garbage collection or not. So note that uh, the reason why Orca does garbage collection in the middle of, garbage collection in the middle of behaviors is just a design decision. So basically, we want, we, we want to avoid to use the stack as roots, but note that adding the stack as root and consider, considering garbage collection in the middle of behaviors would be completely poss possible and it would not change anything in the algorithm. So let us try to, under to understand the garbage collection cycle. We have an actor which has some objects in its local heap. It has an object H which is reachable by somewhere else and therefore it has a positive reference count. It has also a cycle of objects that it's not reachable by, any by anyone. And this actor can also reach some objects in a different local heap. So therefore, it needs to have some reference counting for them. On the first step of a garbage collection cycle, this actor will look at its local heap and it will mark all the own objects as unreachable. Then it will look at all the objects with a foreign reference count greater than zero and it will also mark those as unreachable. So this means that if an actor has a reference count for an object it does not own, it either can reach the object or it used to be, be able to reach it. On the next step, the actor will start tracing from its fields, marking everything it finds that is reachable. Then it will look at the reference count of on objects and it will also mark as reachable objects that have a reference count 
greater than zero because those objects are definitely reachable by some other actor. And at this st uh, state, we have two objects, E and F, which are not reachable neither by the actor or any other actors, and therefore must be collected. There is a further step in the garbage collection cycle, which I'm not going to detail, but basically, the actor will look at objects that it does not own and used to be able to reach, and it will send a message to the owner of those objects saying, I no longer can reach your objects, please decrement your reference count with. So this is very similar to how the, the message during forwarding <coughs> works. Um, we have done some evaluation, and today I'm just going to show a small subset of what we have done. Um, but the overall, the, the overall result, results is that um, we have seen quite interesting behavior of, of, of Pony with Orca. And it's super, uh, we are super optimistic, and this was super encouraging. So the first test that we, we have, we run some micro benchmarks with and without garbage collection. So what we see in these plots is running these benchmarks that are usually found in actor benchmark suites. And we run it in different number of cores between 4 and 64. And then we measure execution time. And what's really motivating here is to see that Orca has very little or even no overhead in the execution time. So if we look at a different test where we measure the peak memory usage of some benchmarks, we see that Orca doesn't behave as well as, or Pony with Orca does not behave as well as Akka running the C4 collector from the Azul systems. Uh, and the reason why this happens is that we are not collecting whenever an actor needs. The actor is only collecting uh, in the middle of behaviors. So we believe that actors are accumulating quite lots of garbage, and this will, of course, impact the memory, the peak memory usage. But as I mentioned before, we can easily change the algorithm to consider the stack as roots and do collection in the middle of behaviors. So we have also tried to compare Pony against other languages. And although it's very hard to write code and to compare different languages that run in completely different VMs, we tried to, run some, uh, to write some micro benchmarks um, that are somehow equivalent in the different versions. So, and again, we run these benchmarks in different number of cores between 4 and 64, and we measure the total execution time. And we also try to measure how long it takes to do garbage collection. So what you see, for example, in Orange, is how long it took to do concurrent garbage collection. And this is really encouraging, right? Um, we can see that Pony with Orca is behaving much better than the, the two other languages. For example, for Erlang, it's almost five times better, between four and five times better, and almost three times better than, than Akka. This is really encouraging results. There are, of course, that there are some limitations. For example, um, one of them is that we need to do uh, tracing on message sending and receiving. Uh, and what we see here is the result of having many actors sending messages containing really large graphs. Namely, they are sending trees of some variable depth, between depth 4 and depth 16. And uh, as we were expecting, sending these messages in ACA do not have any impact on performance. It's almost constant time. And we can also see that Erlang gets slightly worse when we increase, when we increase the, the, the depth of the trees being sent. But what we were not expecting was to see that Pony behaves exponentially worse when we increase the depths. Why is that? Well, we are tracing our message sending and receiving, so some overhead is expected. But it's not only that. So we allocated these trees with a bread first order, and during tracing, we are actually using a depth first order. And it took me quite some time to realize that this benchmark was causing lots of cache misses and therefore was delaying the execution time for quite a bit. We currently have an implementation, an optimization, that avoids the, the tracing of immutable data structures upon message sending. And we get really good performance on this one. For mutable ones, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow at Onward. So uh, if you are interested, please join us. Uh, just to wrap up, what I've shown you, or what I've told you about, was about Pony, an actor language that uses uh, the type system and message passing um, to, to help the garbage collector to achieve fully concurrent and pauseless garbage collection while allowing for shared states of uh, shared state among different actors. We have also reached uh, several micro benchmarks that give us some confidence, but 
I think that one of the, the things that make us <coughs> super proud is the fact that we have implemented uh, Orca in a richer language. And although Orca was co-designed with Pony, it's still possible to implement it in different actor languages. In this case, Angkor, which is a much richer language, and it has a completely different type system, and it still works. So with that, thank you very much, and I'll take questions.